Hello, people of the internet. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and uh, happy Monday to you all. Hopefully, your week is off to a great start. Or if you're watching this at any other point in the week, hopefully, having a great day. Nonetheless, I am back from having made a terrifically, wonderfully filling dinner. And we have an album to get through. Um, the other 10 songs off of NCT 127's latest Walk album. Um, I still cannot get over the fact that it has not been a year yet since uh, Fact Check era, and we already have another studio length album. That's insane to me, the turnaround that they've had. Especially considering. Well, realistically, the only major release that 127 have had in between now and Fact Check was, uh, was it Be With Me? The uh, little holiday single album that they dropped at the end of the year last year. So you could make an argument that 127 have gone back-to-back studio-length albums, which is unheard of. But I'm still excited regardless. So, very long album to get through. Got the visualizers all queued up. I've got the album credits pulled up on the second screen, so we are going to go through them in order, as we usually do. Um, <coughs> excuse me. This is an NCT album. This is an SM album. And I know for a fact this is going to get blocked if I upload it straight up, because that's how it's kind of been for every single 127 album so far. So, much like the same way with Fact Check last time around, I'll chop this one up if it's... The version you're seeing on YouTube will be chopped up. Link in the description below will take you to the uncut version of this. And then down in the description you'll also find the spreadsheet to all the other uncut uh, reactional stuff that I've had to move off of YouTube onto the pCloud. So, refer to those at your pleasure. But, let's get into the music. Here we go! Let's get her going. Track number one, intro, wall to wall. Lyrics by Wu Tan. Composition, Christopher Aaron Johnson, Mark Benedicto with New Haven on arrangement. Here we go. One, a cool way to start. But if you kind of take a step back and really just let it sink in, it's just got really nice, gentle movement to it. I'm in the studio day and night. I, I feel like I'm listening to like an inspirational speech. Like, hear how huge this song is, especially on the major hits. Wow! That's crazy! Okay, there's like intro tracks, and then there's that. I, I think the intro track is such an interesting concept because there's so many different things you can do with it. But ultimately, what it needs to do is get your attention, right? I'd say that did a pretty good job of doing that. I, it really did feel like an inspirational speech around the halfway mark, especially when you get that huge, big moment. And I think that's so cool. Usually when we get, like, intro tracks, I mean, first of all, they're not full-length songs. They usually get, like, a snippet of a song, or maybe just, like, a little instrumental opening. But, you know, we, we're getting full-length proper, like, musical works as an intro track. And I'm so happy that we are, because the intro always gets neglected. The intros and outros always get neglected on albums, because they're, they don't bring an interestingness to enough of the general public. Wall to wall is something different. Like, I was so locked in during that, I couldn't even think of anything to say. I was just like, yes, I need to pay attention to what's happening because it's important and I want to be involved with it. That's really cool. And it really does feel like a... Um, I'm going to use the concert analogy again because I feel like with a lot of NCT albums, that concert analogy does work. But... Thinking about intro wall to wall as the opening narration to a concert just makes so much sense because this gets you amped up, but it gets the attention locked into what's happening, right? Oh, that's very cool. I love that. Right. We're going to skip track of number two, Walk, because of course that was the title track and we've spent time on it. But I'll read off the credits very quickly. 
Lyrics by Wu Tan, composition in London Sears, Manifest, Stuart Lowry, Jonathan Hoskins, MZMC with Jonathan Hoskins, Late Shore, Late Shore, and MZMC on arrangement, which now takes us to track number three, the first of the new B sides titled No Clue. Lyrics by Yi Hye, Yi Hye Um, Yi Hye, Yi Hye Um of Jam Factory. It's in Hangul, so I'm gonna. I, I'm hoping I got it right. If I did it get it wrong, I apologize. Um, composition: Mike Daly, Mitchell Owen, Sarah Forsberg, Robert Vito McCoy the Third, Adrian McKinnon, Jeremy Tage, Jeremy Tage, Jasper, Michael Jimenez, with Mike Daly and Mitchell Owen's on arrangement. There's some familiar names in there. It's pretty chill. Entirely rap chorus though. You don't even get an instrumental section really. There we go, there's the gear switch. It flip flops a lot between very melodic and very rap heavy, doesn't it? There's no really like weird transition section. You either get vocals or you either get rap. And the way they go straight into the rap after that sheesh and the instruments cut out. It's almost like it acts that rap verse in the chorus and acts like an empty drum. I mean, this is one, two, seven, right? We had to get some vocal sauce in here at some point, and they do it again. Okay, I'm glad they didn't change up the formula all of a sudden. It makes listening to it a lot easier. Cool. That's a very chill and groovy song to follow up. Admittedly, like, walk, I think pacing-wise, following up walk with no clue makes sense. But the energy of it, it's like, if walk was that, like, stank stank face inducing, just mm, that kind of walk, no clue is much more, you know, heel-toe, just casual walk through town type of vibe, and that's kind of nice. There's that, and I think, I mentioned during when we watch walk, but I'm not the biggest fan of like a very rap heavy song mainly because i don't really have a connection to that yet i'm much more of a melodic person so i prefer all a lot of like the melodic songs that one two seven or just in general k-pop does having said that no clue interweaves in the rap section and displays it in a way where it creates such a nice contrast between the vocal and the rap section because well it's very evident when those, you know, different vocal dominances portrayed. Sure, let's go with that. I don't know if that makes sense or not, but it's like I can, the rap verse isn't trying to be a vocal part, and the vocal part isn't trying to be the rap part. There's a very clear separation there, and so when whenever the rap section's here, it's like okay, okay, feel the flow, feel the flow, and when the vocals are here, it's feel the melody. There's no getting confused anywhere in the song, which I really appreciate. It makes it so easy to follow along with. But also the pacing is really nice. I think this kind of casual walking pace really makes for a good everyday song, so to speak. Cool. Next up, track number four, Orange Soul, lyrics by Wu Tan, composition, Humbler, Andrew Choi, San Yoon, with Humbler on arrangement. Again, a couple names I'm familiar with. It's got a terrific smoothness to it. It feels like what 1G7 would do if they got the prompt for NYCT that Hitch on and Tail did a little while ago. It's very classy with the kind of jazz band vibe. Yeah, it's got a modernness to it, but it's also got a classiness to it. Nice hold on the wall. Yeah, that release gets a really nice, gentle brightness added into it that feels very appropriate. I was waiting to see if it will get like extra smooth with the vocals or pick up an extra little bit of sauce. There's some sauce on here now. Nice vocal separation. Oh, and a nice gentle release at the end to finish. That's cool. It's definitely the brightest, like probably the friendliest song we've gotten on the album so far. But 
at the same time, it still has that really casual pace to it. It's not an overwhelming song at all. And, you know, we've definitely got a lot more of that melodic side of 127 on display here. But it's also done in a way that's very me coded. I love, I love a good jazz section. I think, you know, like, there's the B movie meme about black jazz, but genuine, I think jazz is terrific. And when you get uh, a really cool composition style where you take some cool composition cues from that jazz genre and incorporate some of the instruments as like fills, but not have it consistently in the background, I think really adds a really nice little bit of like classiness to it. And it makes it feel expensive. It makes it feel a little bit refined. And I think that's really cool. And it works for me. I'm trying to think like, I'm not, I don't, I, mean, I don't have a great memory. I think that's kind of been evident over the course of me trying to remember all the music that we, we took in last year, but there's just something about NCT vocals with brass, like smooth brass and smooth woodwind that works for me. Like, I mean, you know, Hitchum and Tails NYCT, I thought was absolutely spectacular. That NCT lab they did was unbelievable. But like having Orange Soul on this album and kind of knowing what M NYCT was like with just two of the members to get everyone involved and get the energy of, well, it's not everyone, is it? Because we're 127 is down a member right now. I completely forgot about that. We don't have uh, Mr. Taeyong anymore because he's he's off in mandatory enlistment, isn't he? Oh, gosh. How did it take five, four songs for me to realize that? Oh, gosh. That's so bad on my part. Anyways, I'm getting distracted. Orange Soul feels very 127, but it still has that jazziness that I really like. And it, it doesn't feel like it was like a shoehorned in song. It feels like what 127 would interpret as their own kind of modern jazz fusion song. I think that's cool. Hell yeah. Track uh, number five, titled Prices. Lyrics by Yu Jae-un of Jam Factory. Composition Patrick J.Q. Smith, Dwayne Whitmore Jr. and Grant Boutin with Grant Boutin on arrangement. Yeah. There's some cool vocal mods going on with that really low vocal there. I reckon this probably isn't the full release of the course, is it? Rap main top line. Vocal harmonies in the background. Vocal combo. And much like with Orange Soul, it's a little bit brighter and it's got a little bit more energy, but it's not fast. Are they gonna do the vocal stack again? Also, I'm picking up on the sauce there in the post chorus. You hit open. There it is. Interesting, we're getting the kind of disco string hits again. Ooh. And it got a little tasty at the end with the piano run. Okay. This is interesting. Like, this entire album in general really has not leapt up at me to like you know has tried to jump me it's just been really casual across the board and i kind of like it like don't get me wrong i love a good intense 127 song but the fact that this entire album kind of is just you know going at its own pace minding its own business that kind of relaxed vibe goes shows in their music and i'm kind of liking the vibe of it like i can't help but you know just vibe along to it cool but yeah pricey it's Initially, when we started, I thought we were going to go somewhere like, um, I'm going to throw you some girl group music songs here. Um, I don't know if you will get these references, but From Us Nine's Attitude and Weekly's Backwards, two B-sides from last year, but both of them have that kind of clubby synth vibe going on. And, you know, 127 are no stranger to, I think, a clubby beat, or at least the pacing of a clubby beat. They're definitely not a stranger to didn't it, it never ran off like that it never really just kind of you know hit the throttle and went just we're just gonna keep it going had a nice little disco-y vibe in some parts especially when you get the strings coming in 
disco strings coming in again. You get the just a combination of that really nice funky disco-y bass line with synthesizers is always a great combination. But that that chorus, that chorus I think is so smart and it's so clever. Because you know, for me, I've always kind of associated a pretty rap heavy song with one two seven just because I mean, my initial exposure to them was Kick It, and, you know, first exposure of them on the channel was Ayo, and I was just like, oh, what came before that? It was like Lemonade, Sticker, it was, I feel like I found 127 in an era where they were doing a lot of rap heavy stuff, so that's just kind of how I naturally associate with them. So to have the rap line take lead in this course, but then provide a vocal harmony underneath it, I think is just so 127 of them to do. Because the inverse, as I mentioned throughout the song, has happened before in other groups. And I think it's less of a rap harmony in other cases and more of like a gang vocal section, which I've, like in terms of the effect is pretty much the same. But the fact that 127 went, now nah, we'll flip the script on it and done it really well just feels so on brand for them. And I think that's just so clever. Like compositionally, Pricing is probably my favorite song on the album so far. It's just very the details are so well done. Oh. Right. Next up, track at number six, Time Capsule. Joe in Hole from Lala Studio on lyrics. Uh Alex Wilka, Jake Miller, Jack Sampson on composition with Alex Wilka on arrangement. It's faster than I thought it was going to be. I mean, that's not really saying much because it's not a fast song at all. Ooh. It feels like we're getting later in the day now. Oh, it's buttery. Oh, hold on a second. Oh, and all the vocal hits. Wow. This vibe is terrific. And then as soon as you start like vibing to it, you get the big vocal hits to bring you back. I love how open this song sounds down the bridge. Build the harmony, build the power, bring it back in. I love the variety of the vocal top lines we're getting here at the end. I like to imagine that the song started and ended a cappella, even though I know that's probably a digital bass at the end, but just, just thinking about it. Oh, this song a cappella would hit so hard. And I don't, I don't know if... NCT have ever done anything like that before, but oh, I'm just thinking about the potential of a time capsule acapella version because this song would sound so good on it. Oh, okay, that snuck up on me because I think off of first listen, in terms of how I've received it, time capsule is my favorite song uh, in terms of the B side so far. But wow, this is literally one two seven vocal hours isn't it wow oh, and the fact that until you really get to the final chorus for the most part it's a very low vocal song like they're singing pretty low in their vocal registers for the most part and especially in moments where when you get people like you know your doyoms your moon tails your hitchon singing low you're accustomed to hearing them have those high note belts whenever they have their vocal moments so to hear them sit low especially you know someone like Hitchon who's naturally got a very high tone and such an easily distinguishable voice to hear that easily distinguishable vocal color sing really low is just super cool and super charming to me but again Time Capsule retains that really nice walking pace of it. It's not a huge song that's meant to jump out at you. It's a it's a mood setter, and the mood is terrific. It's nice and calm. It's very almost late night vibes. I think it's a little bit too fast to be late night vibes, but you know, evening vibes. Now we're we're starting to wind down the day, and I think oh, the sensation of that it really does work so well. And again, it's songs like this that keep me coming back for more vocal 127. It's not like I don't like rap 127. 
but this is the type of 127 music that keeps me coming back for more. Oh, nice. Right, next up, track number seven, Can't Help Myself, lyrics by Kenzie, composition, Kenzie, Peter Waldeck, Daniel Davidson, Ben Samama, David Arkwright, with PhD on arrangement. The song feels huge, like this instrumental section feels like it rings forever. Is this gonna build somewhere? I feel some anticipation coming. Oh my goodness, it's really pretty. All the little digital ad libs in the background. Hello, post chorus. Hold on a second. Wow. Cool little descending scale on the vocal line there. Straight into the harmony. This very much is Time Capsule 2.0 for me, but I might actually prefer Can't Help Myself over Time Capsule now. Wow, that's just so pretty. Like that as a killing moment in the song? Wow, that's so pretty. Cool ending. It's almost like it ends like a musical almost. Huh. Well, hold on a second. I'm gonna have to fix my notes now because I wrote for Time Capsule, Vibey, vocal hits. Um, can't help myself. Vibey, vocal hits. <laughs> But I think if we're talking about kind of like the aesthetics of the sound, Can't Help Myself feels a little bit more late night vibey during the verses. But boy, does that chorus really pack a punch, especially that post chorus with the almost um, vocoded like vocals. Oh, oh, it's so pretty. And it just kind of sneaks up on you. And the fact that this entire album kind of has been kind of on the down low. In terms of, even on a song like Walk, you don't have your big in-your-face moment, really, in comparison to, I don't know, say a song like, well, let's use Fact Check, because it's recent. You know, Fact Check, that chorus really comes at you pretty quickly, and when it does, it's intense, right? Ah, check that, facts go check that. Like, it's pretty intense. Walk, you don't really get that intensity from it, and weirdly enough, Can't Help Myself and that big post course vocal hit is probably one of the most intense moments you get on this entire album, full stop. That's crazy to think about. Because, really, the intensity comes from the volume and the suddenness of it. Because if you kind of break it down on paper, it's just a very pretty vocal moment that's got a little bit of digital work into it, and just boom just appears, and it's very pretty. I love stuff like this. But the fact that this is, like, one of the most intense moments in the album, saying something, because this is 127 we're talking about here. Dang. Dang, that's so good. Like, genuinely, that one tooth of Time Capsule and Can't Help Myself is, like, my one and two pick in terms of B-side of the album. I love a good vibey track like this, and when it's done this well, yeah, it's spectacular. Right, track uh, number eight, titled Raindrop, lyrics by Jung Il Lee of Jam Factory, uh, composition Ninos Hana, CX Lucas, Adam Ben Yahia, with, and Justin Starling with CX Lucas on arrangement. I don't know why this reminded me of GTA 5, but it's reminded me of GTA 5. And the fact that, again, it's a rap-heavy song, but it's almost prioritizing vibes over anything else. It's not an intense song, it's not fast. This low vocal, or this low, low top line for the chorus, with the occasional whistle fills in the background, is a really cool touch. Turn up the intensity a little bit, okay. Got some volume up in there for a second. Who knew that you could have the late night vibes from a predominantly rap top line? That was a trip and a half, my goodness. Yeah, I can't get the thought of GTA 5 out of my head. It's like the... 
And I think it's the instrumentals that have a big hand in that because they sound very similar to me. But the pacing of it has this really almost cool laid backness to it, where it's just like, you know, the you know the phrase of marching to the beat of their own drum. Like this very much feels like a song that goes by its own beat, where it's just it does what it wants, whatever it wants, and you know what, we're just gonna just like casually lounge through life with this song. I think that's so neat. And the fact that, again, it's a rap-heavy song that just sounds so relaxed and easy. Like, you know, it takes, it, it's the type of song where you kind of like kick your feet up and relax, but it's a rap song. Wow. That's cool. It's like this, like Raindrop kind of as an entire whole song is essentially throwing out every single assumption and misconception I had about rap music out the window right now. Because whenever I think of rap heavy music, I think of very intense beat, pretty aggressive, pretty loud, decently quick. It doesn't have to be decently quick, but, you know, this type of beat where you can really flow on it, really spit some venom. Nah, Raindrop is so laid back. And you know what? I can get behind a song like that. That's kind of nice. And that's coming from someone who really normally doesn't like rap heavy music. Hell yeah. Maybe it's me, like, act mature, my, my musical taste maturing or something like that, but I'm not going to complain about it. Rightio, track number nine, simply titled Gas. Uh, lyrics by Wu Tang. Composition. Where are we? Anthony Russo, Kami, Kyle Buckley, Charles Roberts, Nelson, MZMC. Arrangement. Inverness. Great place, by the way. Pink Slip and MZMC on arrangement. What album was it earlier where I I made the Inverness comment? Whose album did we check out recently where I said that? Oh, I can't remember now. Okay, we're turning it up a little bit now. Like, in terms of the speed, it's not fast. But we're putting more into every beat now. Oh, that developed a lot more than I thought it was going to. You know where I would love to listen to this song? In a car. I don't know why I was preparing my body. Yeah, boy. <laughs> what was it where we got a yeah boy from Mark? Baggy jeans? And of course, eventually at some point, we have to make it back to the melodic side. Oh, wait, hold on a second. What is this fight? Chorus. No, I'm, I'm head bopping too much to make notes. Oi, that song, the way it finished was kinda gas, I'm not gonna lie, that's nice. And you know what? I was wondering if we were going to get a generally vibey 127 album. I'm glad gas exists, because, you know, we're, we're turning up the energy a little bit. Admittedly, we are on song 9 out of 11, so that makes me wonder how we're gonna finish the album now. But, it's very nice that we're getting an energetic 127 song in here. That was... Hoping we get something more akin to Angel Eyes, but that's just me being a very hardcore fan of that 1980s sound. Um, my goodness, I still remember hearing Angel Eyes for the first time. That experience, oh, that was so much fun. But let's talk about Gas one time. Yes, we're cranking up the intensity now. It's got a lot more of that intensity to it. It's more in your face. It's got a terrific bounce to it. And then... When you think, okay, I'm I'm feeling the energy of it, the final chorus comes around, and the final chorus it double times the double times the major beat throws more petrol on the fire, throws more gasoline on the fire. We're cooking with diesel now on that final chorus. It's just oh, like yes, when you've got a song of this nature and like you know. First two verses, already, I think the energy is great. Like, we've got, we've reached a different level of energy. You're really feeling it. You're getting up and moving. And then all of a sudden, you know, you get your melodic break with the bridge, as is 
kind of with every single, um, not every single, most 127 songs. If it's rap heavy, you got to get the vocal side in at some point, and that's typically the bridge. But that release, you expect that major beat from verses 1 and 2 to come back again. It does, but not really, because it's the same bass. We're just doubling the speed of it. And when your body picks it up, you're like, hell yes, and you join in on it, and you feel that double time pace, and it's nice, satisfying. It feels high octane now, which for a song title guess is very appropriate, but yeah. Now I, I wasn't I was already liking it, but I wasn't sure exactly how I was feeling about the song through the first two verses. But that final chorus definitely cleared up a lot of questions I had about it. Some thumbs of thumbs of approval, sure, from me on that one. And then we continue track a uh, number ten titled Suddenly. Uh lyrics by Moon Yu Wool and Zaya of 153 Jumbas. Composition True Gent. Ronnie Icon, Ryan Curtis with Trujant and Ronnie Icon on arrangement. It appears to be we're going back to that relaxed vibe. No, we aren't. Fake riser. Oh, oh, that's cheeky. Oh, well, that came up out of nowhere. Hold on a second. Okay, so my initial assumption of it being a little bit more low-key and vibey isn't exactly wrong. There's some cool chord stuff going on too, really interesting chord choices. Hello, brass section. I just can't believe you hear what hey. The one, two, seven flip, alright. And we just naturally make our way back to this. Wow. This unison harmony with the brass section almost gives it a party vibe. Like, it's not like a huge party, like, you know, banger type party beat, but it does kind of liven it up a little bit in a really interesting way. But, wow. You know, you know what's funny is when that flip happens for the bridge, and you feel the beat switch into a very different direction. Like, I'm at the point in knowing NCT where I should have expected that, and like, realistically, I probably should have, considering just how many times we've gone through a major switch in sound with an NCT-related song. Like, well, Golden Age comes to mind from last year. Yeah, super pretty... Um, what the... Oh gosh, remember the name. The Sonata Pathétique sample, and then all of a sudden, hard intense rap with the glitchy electronic instruments in the background, and then back to the smooth classical, and then the glitchies. Like, I should have expected that, but I was getting so comfortable with this album that that completely slipped my mind, and of course when it happens, it suddenly catches you off guard. Extremely appropriately titled. I can't believe they held that and the the one two seven flip or the NCT flip until song ten out of eleven. Like that's so cruel. I mean, that's the best way possible, by the way. But really, suddenly just has is loaded with a whole bunch of surprises. Like the fake riser into this really minimal and slow beat. The initially when the, I heard that first riser come in, I thought we were gonna get something like Shiny's the feeling where you have the really big, really dominant white noise riser, and then we've got a really fast beat to finish. That is the epitome of an anti-drop, essentially. And it happens multiple times throughout the song, and every single time I was, I, I was fooled, I was bamboozled. And then, of course, that bridge comes around. It's like, yeah, okay, yep, we're throwing all the toys out of the pram now. And then, you know, before you realize it, the song naturally makes it back home. It's like... How how did we get here from where we started two seconds ago? But again, I guess that is the magic of one two seven, really, isn't it? Oh, again, very clever song though, very clever indeed. And this takes us to the last of the tracks on the Walk album, 
Track number 11, Meaning of Love. Lyrics by Demian. Uh, composition... No, not Nozcat? N-O number 2 Z-Cat? We we'll call you Nozcat. Uh, Suit, Demian, Kim ji Sob, and Yu Won with Nozcat, Suit, and Kim ji Sob on arrangement. <laughs> Oh, it was such a short heart It was so nice. Oh, sauce the vocals you done. Oh, this is a wonderful way to finish. It's so friendly and it's so light. The two different vocal stacks there with two different people. Okay, Jong. Like, this song is swimming in sauce. I can't help but smile to this song. Like, yes, the MV is cute, but the song is just so warm and inviting. And this final chorus, the way it just, like, sprouts. I'm, I'm about to get really cheesy here for a second, but the concept of, you know, the meaning of love, it's a very... It's a human emotion that has a... If, if everything is going well, it's very warm and it's very bright, right? With the way this song progresses, that final chorus feels like the members have found that meaning of love. The way it just blooms. It all, it's almost like a firework going off, right? And, you know, maybe that is the effect of, like, what falling in love feels like and what that you know, relationship, the start of a big, happy, healthy relationship is like. It feels like a firework going off. Everything just lines up, and everything just feels perfect. That final course, the way it bloomed, just felt perfect. And it's, oh, it's terrific. So Lego Taeyong is absolutely, it's such a, such a cool way to, like, tie in Taeyong in there. But the song is so pretty. I love when we get vocal rap line involved. It's for me in NC uh, in 127 specifically, I don't know all their vocals enough to be able to identify who's who by tone yet. Like I need to see who's singing to really know for some of the members. But the one thing I do know is that we have got a really wide range of vocals on display and meaning of love essentially is a way to really show off the charms of everyone's soft, gentle vocal. And I think just the overall combination of everyone just sounds so, so, so good. And you know what? Typically, I'd say that I make the comment about, you know, you gotta finish the album on a big party banger or a ballad. Either finish on a high or finish gent bring it gently down onto the ground onto the ground oh, excuse me but meaning of love you know i think stylistically is kind of an outsider in comparison to the rest of this album like well i mean suddenly and gas are probably no you know what gas is probably the only other song that doesn't really fit like a general mold of this album but this is a very vibey, but also not very bright and energetic album, all things considered. Sure, Gas has a lot, brings a lot of heat to it. But Meaning of Love, and the way that it still takes that casual laid-back pace, but finishes it on the bright high, it has the lasting effects of essentially ending the album on a big party banger or like an encore song but still keeping it within the confines of the album. Just sonically, it's bright, it's warm, it's just it's just a nice ending. But it doesn't feel really out of pace in terms of how the rest of the album progresses, because this album is not fast, apart from Gas. And you know what? Hell yes from me. Okay, let's talk about this album, shall we? Um, my notes are very small, but big enough to where I can read them. Overall, this, like, 127, mid-July, I was essentially expecting a high-intensity, just 
100 miles an hour all the way type, you know, uh, 100 is even that fast, 200 miles an hour all the way from start to finish. No, they went really chill for it. It's almost like the, the summer version of the holiday single, in a way. And that's really cool to me. Because I think it's a bold strategy to, you know, come into this time of year. Like, we are in... We are in summer now. We are well and truly in summer. Admittedly, I think the proper summer music season will start in about two, three weeks time when the East goes officially into summer breaks. And we're talking like first week of August, we're probably going to see the summer bangers. But, you know, artists are slowly but surely cranking up the energy little by little now that it's very warm outside. 127 really doesn't fall into that with this era. And I think that's really interesting because they've made, for me, I think some of their most creative songs in like in terms of style and doing it in a way where it immediately doesn't appear to be a very 127 song until you really process it. Then it's just a really well-crafted 127 song. Like, you know, Orange Soul bringing a little bit of jazz band into it. Like, 127 and jazz is not a combination I feel like I would immediately think of, but it still feels very 127 of them. It especially helps having NYCT as a reference point to them. You know, Time Capsule and Can't Help Myself, that 1-2 combo with the really vibey late night mood and the big vocal moments, yeah, I feel like is, isn't something that on paper screams 127 right away but when you listen to it it feels very 127 or like a different variation of a 127 song even you know walk the title track as someone who's fairly new to the well new to properly diving into the discography when i think of 127 i think of intense music walk is intense in a very different way and for me, this is such a good era to learn what 127 are capable of in terms of range. Like, Fat Trick era, we got a lot of different flavors of 127, but this is a different side of 127 I did not see coming, and I thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, besides the album, for me, still, it's either the 1-2 combo of Time Capsule and Can't Help Myself, or... Meaning of Love. I think Meaning of Love on its own is just such a special song. And I love a good happy vibe like that. But Time Capsule and Can't Help Myself are unbelievable B-sides that will get lots of playtime from me. But I am going to wrap it up here for the album listen, whether you checked it out on YouTube or over on the P Cloud. Thank you all for listening along with me. Hopefully you enjoyed it as much as I did. One last request from me today, let us work together as a community to bring a little bit of extra happiness back into the world, whether it be checking with your friends and family, holding the door open for somebody, or even picking up a piece of trash off the street. Just one small act of kindness that may brighten up someone else's day-to-day and know that wherever you are in the world, should you ever be going through a tough time in your life, for whatever reason it may be, even though I'm just some guy in the internet who waffles about music in his free time, you know that I will always be a friend, ally, shoulder to lean on, whatever you need me. So take care of yourselves, take care of each other, spread the love, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!